Hey guys, let us learn about larynx and its nerve supply and the muscles involved. So the vagus now, tenth now supplies larynx. Tenth now divides into superior laryngeal now and recurrent laryngeal now. This superior laryngeal now is again divided into internal laryngeal now and external laryngeal now. So this internal laryngeal now supplies the interior of the larynx that is the sensory supply. Whereas the external laryngeal now supplies a muscle called as cricothyroid muscle. Coming to the recurrent laryngeal now, recurrent laryngeal ha now has both motor and sensory supplies. Coming to the internal laryngeal now, internal laryngeal now sensory supply is above the vocal cord. Whereas recurrent laryngeal now sensory supply is below the vocal cord. Internal laryngeal now does not have any motor supply. Whereas external laryngeal now does not have any sensory supply. It supplies only motor that is to the cricothyroid muscle. Now when we discuss about the recurrent laryngeal now, there are two recurrent laryngeal now that is right and left right. So right laryngeal now, right recurrent laryngeal now takes a short course. RT short is right. It, it loops around the subclavian artery, right subclavian artery. Whereas the left laryngeal now takes a loop around the aortic arch and it takes a long course all else left is long course and loops around the aortic arch and it is more prone to injury because it is having a long course and its proximity to the important structures now when we discuss about the muscles of the larynx so these are the muscles of the larynx which are divided into adductors abductors and tensors plus abductors so when we discuss about the adductor muscles, all muscles of the larynx are adductors except one muscle that is abductor which is posterior cricoarytenoid. So remember it as posterior cricoarytenoid right. So this is car, car meaning cab that is abduction. So this is the only abductor of the larynx which is posterior cricoarytenoid which is car, car is cab and abduction. Whereas restol muscles are adductors. The restol muscles you can derive by this diagram. So here is the thyroid cartilage, here is the cricoid cartilage which is a circular cartilage and here are the arytenoid muscles. So now you need to join two cartilages together with a muscle. So first let us join cricoid to thyroid. So the muscle is cricothyroid. Then cricoid to arytenoid, so the muscle is cricoarytenoid. Now you have to connect arytenoid to thyroid. This combination is left over, right? So the muscle is thyroarytenoid. When we have to join both the arytenoids, you join them simply, that is interarytenoid and obliquely, that is oblique arytenoid. So these are all the adductors of the larynx, whereas posterior cricoarytenoid is the only abductor. Now coming to the tensors, cricothyroid is the only tensor of the larynx that is it is most important muscle to increase the pitch of the voice, to increase the tension of the vocal cords. Whereas modulator of the larynx is vocalis because anterior part of vocalis muscle acts like a tensor whereas the posterior part acts like a relaxer. So it acts accordingly to the function of the larynx. So vocalis muscle is called as the modulator of the larynx. Cricothyroid increases the tension. So this completes the important muscles of the larynx. Now let us understand the laryngeal nerve supply. This is regarding the laryngeal nerve supply. So vagus nerve is divided into superior laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve. This superior laryngeal nerve is again divided into external laryngeal and internal laryngeal as already discussed. So when we discuss about the sensory and motor supplies, external has no sensory function. It is uh, supplied to cricothyroid muscle. So remember it as cricothyroid is the only exceptional muscle. So exception is external laryngeal now. Whereas remaining all muscles are by recurrent laryngeal now, RE and RE. So remaining all muscles except cricothyroid are recurrent laryngeal now. Coming to the sensory supply, internal laryngeal now supplies supraglottis that is above the vocal cords region. Whereas recurrent laryngeal now supplies below the vocal cord region that is the vocal cord region that is glottis and below it that is subglottis. So these are the areas supplied by the SLN and RLN. So when there is an injury to SLN that means ILN is also injured. 
that means sensory supply above the vocal cords is injured when sensation is lost he, the person is more prone to aspiration so when the cricothyroid muscle will be gone the tension generator is gone right so pitch of the voice decreases so individual uh, functioning of each muscle is important like abductors uh, tensors adductors and all and the nerve supply is important so now that we have completed the nerve supply let us understand the laryngeal nerve palsy now so in order to understand the laryngeal nerve palsy and their management now we need to understand few positions of the vocal cords so let us assume this is uh, the schematic diagram of vocal cord position so if in front there is the epiglottis and behind there is the crico cricoid cartilage okay so now when the vocal cord is in the midline it is called as m midline position and when it is 1.5 mm away from the midline it is paramedian when it is 3.5 mm away it is intermediate or cadaveric position when it is 7 mm away it is slight abduction abduction and 9.5 mm away it is full abduction so full abduction position is obtained when we are forcedly respirating slight abduction when there is a normal respiration intermediate or cadaveric position when there is a complete palsy complete palsy meaning total vagus nerve vagus nerve divides into sln and rln right so complete palsy meaning both sln and rln palsy coming to paramedian position paramedian position is during whispering whereas median position is during speech and swallowing these are the important positions that you need to remember regarding the vocal cords in order to understand the management of the vocal cord palsy now let us discuss about the vocal cord palsy so when we discuss about the vocal cord palsy it is divided into both rln and complete so recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy is again divided into unilateral recurrent bilateral recurrent and complete is again divided into unilateral complete and bilateral complete so recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy is otherwise called as incomplete palsy because in rln only abductor fibers are affected whereas in complete palsy whereas sl in wherein sln and rln are involved it is called as adductor palsy now let us discuss about individual palsies in detail when we discuss about unilateral rln palsy the speech is normal and the respiration is also normal because the vocal cord position is like this only one side is affected so one side abduction one side abduction is there the other side abduction is not there but still it can manage right there is a compensation mechanism so everything looks normal and there is no aspiration in this patients now coming to the bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy the speech is normal whereas slight hoarseness may be present because both cords are proximalized they are near to each other this causes strider and there is no aspiration coming to complete palsy when unilateral and bilateral in complete palsy you talk about sln also right so sln has iln and eln so in iln nerve deals with sensory supply right so when iln is lost aspiration occurs because the sensation above the vocal cords is lost so when the iln is lost aspiration occurs and coming to the speech in complete palsy aphonia is seen in bilateral complete palsy definitely aphonia is seen here aphonia may sometimes be missed coming to the respiration here it is normal because the vocal cords are placed far away from each other coming to aspiration since iln is affected aspiration is seen in these patients when we talk about the treatment in the first case since everything is normal conservative treatment is enough whereas bilateral recurrent laryngeal now since the cords are very near to each other we need to lateralize them so we need to do tracheostomy plus lateralization of the vocal cords in the complete palsy since adduction is affected the cord goes into abduction whereas the other side cord in order to compensate comes towards it so we need to do medialization tracheostomy plus medialization in bilateral palsy we need to do tracheostomy and epiglottopexy and vocal cord plication so this is uh, an important flow chart regarding management of vocal cord palsy these are the positions of the vocal cords in general now when we discuss about only sln palsy like only rln was discussed and complete was discussed so when we discuss about only sln palsy that is iln and eln when eln is gone cricothyroid is an exception exception is external 
so the pitch of the voice is affected when iln is gone iln is for sensory supply right so above the vocal cord sensation is lost so that may lead to aspiration in sln palsy vocal cords appearance is skewed position on indirect laryngoscopy and the treatment is speech therapy all ss now let us discuss a question so that this topic uh, gets a, a clear uh, idea so a 35 year old female suffering from carcinoma thyroid underwent a thyroidectomy surgery so both superior laryngeal nerve were injured during the surgery how does the patient present to you post operatively so both sln were gone right so what do we do in sln palsy we have seen that iln is lost and eln is lost when eln is lost speech will be affected that is pitch of the voice will be affected when iln is lost we can see aspiration so see here aphonia aphonia is something related to complete palsy so this is not the answer normal voice is given in the second option this is not possible because speech is affected in sln palsy poor quality voice is there this seems partially correct but there is aspiration in the next option so this seems right answer to me so poor quality of voice with aspiration is the perfect explanation for an sln palsy so this is how you need to solve the palsies of the laryngeal nerve Guys, if you like this kind of content, please do support by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the videos and to the channel. We also have a Telegram channel there you can post your doubts and your topics of difficulty, which I'll try to make simplified. The links to the Telegram channel are provided in the description below. You can go check there once, and you also have the playlist for different subjects. Thank you.